Hey everyone, my name is Colby Brown and today I have a pretty awesome video for you guys. Just this morning, Dell officially announced a few new laptops, including the much anticipated XPS 17 that you guys see right here. Now this is one of just a few near final production versions of Dell's new powerhouse laptop and I've been fortunate to have the opportunity to use it over the last week. That is why I've put this video together to give you a real world hands-on initial impression of what to expect. Let's jump right in. Now before we truly begin, I should note a few things. Because this is a near final production version of the XPS 17, there are some things I can share with you and other things I simply cannot. While the hardware is final, Dell is still putting the final touches on this machine when it comes to drivers, the BIOS, and other software tweaks. So because of this, I can't share any benchmarking numbers with you, even if I really want to. Those will have to be saved for my in-depth review for this laptop, which will be coming out at some point once I get the go ahead. Now, even without those numbers, there is still plenty I can talk about in the performance section of this video, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself just yet. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the build quality and design of the XPS 17. Now, historically, the XPS line of laptops has always been beautifully designed devices because of Dell's attention or obsession with details and their use of high-end materials. And the XPS 17 is certainly no different. Starting with the outside, the body itself comes in platinum silver and is cut from a single block of aluminum in two pieces, making it stronger and more durable than other laptops that are often pieced together. The new diamond cut sidewalls are not only visibly striking as the aluminum wraps around the edges of the body in a very sleek way, but the edges of the laptop frame are much smoother and are much softer to the touch when compared to last year's XPS 15. Speaking of the sides, gone are both the HDMI dedicated port as well as any USB Type A ports, which have all been replaced with four Thunderbolt 3 ports with power delivery as well as a full SD card slot, headphone jack, and a wedge shaped lock slot, which were all previously available on XPS's larger laptop models. Packaged with this laptop, not only will be a USB C to USB Type A adapter that is shipped with most recent XPS laptops, but also a USB C to HDMI dongle as well, which makes up for the missing full dedicated HDMI port. Now on to the interior. Dell has opted for what they say is aerospace inspired carbon fiber, which I have to say both looks and feels fantastic. Now I've been told that the use of carbon fiber is not only to maximize strength and to minimize weight, but also because it offers superior heat resistance to the palm rest, which is important in a laptop this powerful. Now, if you're familiar with the XPS line, the interior of this laptop should look a little bit different, as this is where a lot of the refresh and design came into play. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about the trackpad, which is now huge, taking up much more space than previous models. While it doesn't look twice as big as before, it's probably pretty close. The trackpad feels great when it's in use and offers a very nice tactile feel when you press on it to engage either the left or the right mouse button click. Additionally, you now have beautiful top firing speakers on both sides of the keyboard. Now, I was told that a high speed laser drilled 7,622 holes into these sections to make those grills. And while I didn't count to verify those claims, I can say without a doubt that these are the best sounding laptop speakers that I have ever listened to. The quad speaker design consists of two primary up firing speakers plus two traditional tweeters in the base. On the software side, Dell is using Waves NX 3D audio with head tracking, which allows for this laptop to sound almost as if you're listening to a proper surround sound system, something previously only possible through proper high-end headphones. Bottom line is that I was pretty blown away by what I heard, and I have a feeling that you will be impressed as well. On to the keyboard. The fingerprint reader has now been moved into the keyboard itself, doubling as the power button just above the backspace key following the queue of the XPS 13 9300, which came out earlier this year. The keys themselves are larger than previous generations, which is a nice touch, although that does come at a tiny cost of having a little bit less space between each of the keys. So how does it feel to type on? Pretty great. The keys are nicely responsive and the key depth feels good. Typically, the more travel and movement a key has, the more tactile the experience is when it comes to typing on that device. As customers continue to demand light and thin laptops, this is often where you see most trade-offs when it comes to manufacturers. The deeper a key travels into the body, the less space the manufacturer has for things such as thermal dynamics to keep things cool. Overall, I was happy with the experience of typing on this laptop and even wrote the XPS 17 initial impressions blog post from this device. Now let's go ahead and talk about the display. With the XPS line geared towards photographers and creatives alike, Dell has put a huge focus on the display with this laptop. 
while you can still pick up this laptop with a 1920 by 1200 full HD plus display without touch support, you'd be crazy not to go with the 4K option. Not only do you get a beautiful 4K touch sensitive display with Corning Gorilla Glass 6, but also one that covers 100% of the Adobe 1998 color spectrum and 94% of DCI P3. Now, one of the first things I do with any new laptop is to head straight to my website at colbybrownphotography.com to check out some of my images, because all of these have been processed on high-end color calibrated monitors. While I still recommend picking up a colorometer such as the i1 Display Pro from X-Rite to keep your screens calibrated over time, I am happy to report that the colors look great right out of the box with the XPS 17. The display itself is VESA certified as HDR400 panel that can produce up to 500 nits of brightness and offers excellent viewing angles. While HDR doesn't really matter all that much to me when I'm processing still images, it certainly can come handy when I'm either editing or watching movies on this massive display. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about its size. For years, Dell has been leading the industry with their Infinity Edge display technology. And while it doesn't completely offer a bezel-less laptop experience, they are some of the smallest bezels I have found on a laptop of any size with the XPS 17. By shrinking the bezels, Dell was able to opt for a 16 by 10 display over the more common 16 by nine widescreen aspect ratio. This results in a slightly taller viewing experience that makes both photo and video editing much more of a pleasure to use. This is what allows this device to have such a small footprint for a 17 inch laptop. In fact, the XPS 17 is smaller than many, but not all 15 inch laptops on the market today. Dimension wise, it comes with a width of 14.74 inches, a depth of 9.76, and a height of just 0.77 inches. When stacked together with last year's XPS 15, you can see that while it is bigger, the size difference is pretty minimal for a screen that offers a much larger viewing experience. As for the webcam, it is located at the top of the Infinity Edge display and looks about as good as most laptop webcams do, which is really neither here nor there. But the good news is that the XPS 17 webcam does have built-in Windows Hello support, which I am a big fan of. This means that you can either unlock this laptop with the fingerprint sensor that we talked about before, or just by looking into the 2.25 millimeter infrared HD webcam to securely access the XPS 17. The infrared webcam creates a profile view using depth, which means that someone can't simply hold up a picture of you and try to get into your laptop which should give you a peace of mind if you decide to use this feature. Now let's talk about performance, which is probably the most important aspect when it comes to purchasing a new laptop for many photographers and videographers out there. Dell has put a lot of thought into creating what they feel like is the ultimate laptop for creatives. Let's talk about what specs you can find inside an XPS 17 with the different models that will be available at launch. Starting with the CPU, you will have the new 10th generation Common Lake processors, which will range from an i5 with four processing cores all the way up to an i9 with eight processing cores, which will be available after the XPS 17 officially starts shipping. For RAM, you can choose anywhere between eight to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 dual channel SD RAM, clocking in at 2,933 megahertz. And for your storage options, you have 256 gigabytes at the low end, up to two terabytes, all via PCIe SSD hard drives. Lastly, the size of the XPS 17 means that Dell was able to fit a discrete graphics card into this laptop, which is a pretty big deal, especially when it comes to processing videos or enjoying the occasional video game. Your two main options here are either the NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti or the more powerful RTX 2060 with six gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM, both of which are very capable GPUs. Now, as I mentioned before, I can't share too many specifics about the exact version of the XPS 17 that I have here, but I can tell you that it does represent the upper echelon of the specs I just covered. As a photographer who also dabbles in video production and editing, I would say that my ideal XPS 17 would include an i7 or i9 CPU with at least six to eight processing cores, 32 gigabytes of RAM or more, one terabyte SSD, and the NVIDIA RTX 2060. These laptops are built to be portable powerhouses and with any of the models with these kind of configurations, you would be able to handle just about anything you can throw at it. So jumping back to my own personal user experience with this laptop, not surprisingly, the XPS 17 did not disappoint when it came to processing my images. I was able to use the latest version of Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop to process a number of images and not once that I noticed a slowdown or one ounce of lag during my time with this machine. 
Now, no matter how many layers, localized adjustments, or effects I played with, I was given a smooth user experience throughout, which really you should expect with a laptop this powerful. Now, when it came to processing video, I grabbed some older 4K footage and let my video editor play with Adobe Premiere as well as DaVinci Resolve to see just how well it did. Neither of us had any issues cutting or rendering 4K footage in either program, and while I can't share specific encoding or rendering benchmarks with this laptop at this time, I can let you know that I did experience a solid improvement over last year's XPS 15 when cutting the same exact kind of footage. Now lastly, let's talk about gaming. While creatives spend most of our time trying to create amazing content, many of us don't mind a little casual gaming here and there. With Dell finally offering an RTX 2060 discrete GPU in an XPS laptop, the first of its kind, the XPS 17 is actually a viable option to play some of the latest games out there on the market. While serious gamers would still offer something like Dell's Alienware M15 with its higher refresh rates and better response times, I did find that the XPS 17 can handle its own when it comes to things like Fortnite or more graphically demanding games such as Control from Remedy Entertainment. Now, whether I'm playing with a mouse and keyboard or using a Xbox controller, I was impressed with the results, especially when I lowered the resolution down a notch or two from 4K, which most gaming laptops don't even play at anyway. Now, before we wrap up this video, there are certainly a small handful of things that I haven't covered just yet that are important for you to know. Now, first, let's quickly talk about the weight of this laptop, as most large laptops are generally not very light to carry around. If you opt for the non-touchscreen version of this laptop, the XPS 17 will start at 4.65 pounds, while the touchscreen enabled 4K version will come in right around 5.5 pounds. This puts it on the lighter side of just about every other 17 inch laptop available out there on the market. While I might not bring this laptop with me when traveling remotely around the globe when every ounce of weight really matters, I would happily bring this with me on most situations as the trade-off for weight to power makes the new XPS 17 very enticing for most projects I find myself working on. Next, let's talk about battery life. As I mentioned, this XPS 17 laptop is not a final production version, so it is unfortunately a bit too early for me to share battery life benchmarks with you. I can, however, tell you that this laptop comes with either a 56 or 97 watt per hour battery, depending on the model you are picking up. Historically, anytime you're using CPU or GPU intensive applications, batteries do drain faster, which is no different with this laptop. In the coming weeks, I will be able to share a lot more information about just how long the battery will last with this beast of a laptop. Lastly, I wanna to talk to you about pricing because I haven't mentioned it yet. By the time I made this video, Dell hadn't officially listed the finalized pricing options for each of the models available. I have, however, listed a direct link in the, for the XPS 17 on Dell's website in the description below where you can find all of this information. That's everything I have for now. While it has taken something like 10 years for Dell to bring back the 17-inch laptop into their XPS lineup, they couldn't have picked a better time to make this happen. With a refreshed and design, gorgeous 17-inch wide gamut display and powerful CPU and GPU combinations, Dell has managed to create the ultimate laptop for photographers and videographers in a form factor that gives most 15-inch laptops a run for their money. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below and be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, please. Now, I'm working on giving away a few new cameras and laptops to celebrate the relaunch of this YouTube channel. And I got a ton of new stuff coming down the pipeline as well, from gear reviews to tips and tricks videos and much, much more. Until next time.